Well, good morning, Donnie Walker. Hello, everyone in YouTube land and all over the world. Happy Thanksgiving that just passed to everyone in Canada. I had a great day, cooked a turkey in my trailer and had my folks up and Shelly's folks and her son and a couple of nephews. My daughter was in Vancouver having a little fun with her friends in some haunted house. Taylor got all scared, <laughs> but she had a blast. So yeah, um, bummer on the Canucks last night, Mike. Good try though. Let's see how they do, eh? Good luck on that. Nah, I'm just kidding. I love the team. Hopefully they'll come around and be okay. They, they did play fine. Edmonton was, was pretty good last night. Anyways, so hey. Uh, I've got all my still gear on today. Look at that. Still shoes. Still shirt. Still hat. But I got the Husqvarna necklace. I gotta get some still pendants made up and have for sale. I actually have a goldsmith that you can buy these Husqvarna pendants off of. I gotta get them to make some more and have them for sale our, at our store. So anyways, I had a fella um, asking me about the 066 bottom dog bolt fix, which is the same as I've showed uh, before, um, I believe I did, uh, to put the keen certs in. And yesterday I Googled keen certs, uh, 5MN, 5MM keen certs, and even on, um, what do you call that? Oh, Amazon. You can buy them, buy them right off Amazon. So this is what you get. You get the 5mm Keen certs. okay? So I'm going to show you how to do one. This is an 066 old bottom end. Crankshaft's in perfect good shape, but it's got a chunk out of the crankcase in here. It looks like someone took it apart, probably trying to take the clutch off without the cylinder and piston on it, and the rod smacked here and broke. So they just wrecked that case. Clutch side is still good. Crank's good. These old 066 cranks lasted for 20 years, you know. They're just amazing. These are, all, I would say, the best production saw I ever made. Yep, never nickel and dimed you. Ran forever. They just weren't as smooth as the Huskies. That was your only downfall. They weren't as smooth as a Husky because uh, they had the old rubber mount system and just the design of the motor. Good balanced crankshaft, just just didn't really have the anti-vibration mounting system. But like I say, I say overall, through saw history on the Pacific Coast here, 066, the best. 2100s and Husky, yes. Anyone can differ with me, but I see what we repaired and what we had to do. So anyways, back to this fix. I'm gonna bring you down here in a second. But for this, you're gonna to need to drill it. And on online, they tell you to use an H drill with this tap. The tap is an eight by 1.25 tap. But first, you need to use an H drill, which equals out to a uh, 1764. So they give you a fractional type measurement. Um, uh, roughly around, oh, I forget, 5.66 or something. Uh, anyways, I don't need to go on about that. 1764 drill is what you need to drill your stripped hole out to. So the bottom bolt hole here, we're going to drill it out to that, tap it with the 8 by 1.25 tap, and then we're going to insert our insert. So let's give her a go. Get yourself a drill. Hopefully you can see this okay. I might not be in the picture, but you all see my ugly face before. Okay, so let's get the drill. First, we're gonna move, remove the dog. Oh, I need, a, need another drink of my coffee. I'm getting coffee now from the brew house. It's uh, just down the road here. A friend of mine and his wife own it. Nice little brew house. Uh, you know, I love my Starbucks, but there was a 10 car lineup there today. I went here again to this place. This coffee's better. This is my new coffee shop. Thanks, buddy, from Brood House. Not time to promote their stuff, but it's just a good place. Okay, let's get the dog off. Top bolt. Now, there's another thing on 066s, 461s, 460s, 046s. This top dog bolt sometimes will break off. Uh, I have a friend that can weld magnesium really good. I get him to weld it, and then we countersink the screw again and, and put a screw in it. 
might have to start doing that to some of the huskies that are uh, uh, breaking but hopefully they'll have that fixed done okay so let's get into drilling this i got the drill bed here which is a 1764 like i just said Can't quite drill with it today. I'm going to drill a hole out, try to keep it pretty straight. Okay, drill right through. You're not going to wreck anything. You don't go into the crankcase or anything. Kind of a hollow hole in there. Let's brush it off a bit. Now take your 8 by 1.25 tap, get in your tap handle. I got this old tap handle I love. I love these old, good quality old ones. This is actually a Craftsman number 4067. My dad and me have had this since I was a little kid. Okay, so let's tap the hole now. And I go easy with it. Get it started, try to keep it nice and straight. You don't want that bolt on an angle so it threads in nice. Let's see, that way, that way is good. I go in, back and forth, in a bit more, back and forth. Slower is better. Get a nice thread in there. I use this same, same insert on all starter bolts, top cover bolts which are 5 mm on some, some are um, 6 millimeter, so I have some that are 6 millimeter as well. And I'll do a 6 millimeter one too and show you the drill and top size for it as well. I've never had 4 millimeter ones, but not a lot of 4 millimeter on these anymore. A couple little holes, but they don't normally strip. Even head bolts, uh, muffler bolt bolts, eh? Into the, into the cylinders, you know, like on a still, or husky you can put inserts in them too there's enough room to drill it and these like i say these key inserts are the best ones I, i've ever found there's you don't have to drill them out too big so that way you got enough room to put the insert in okay let's get this tap in a little more okay i think that's pretty good go back and forth with it as you take it out keep those threads nice and clean worked pr properly now there is an installing kind of tool for these inserts and a little pounder but you can do it without them tools and i'll do it without but i'll show you the tools okay so hole is topped okay give it a, give it a little blow out in the air Now take this insert, oh, they got these little pegs and these pegs are what you pound in to hold them in. Take it, screw it in. Okay, screw it in so the, the, the inserts kind of flush with the crankcase, right? So if you don't have that tool, you can just take a pair of pliers and kind of turn Turn this insert in with those pegs until it's flush, eh? Okay. Okay, we're pretty much flush there now. Well, I am perfectly flush, okay? So this this tool here, you can get as a kit from Keenser, but I've... Uh, I don't, didn't see it on um, Amazon, but there's the part number 72190, number 10M5. So this, what it does, here's another insert. The pegs go up there in a the little center there, and it allows you to turn this by hand. It's got a little knurled thing on there so you can turn it in by hand. But you see, I can do it with pliers. Also, this is another tool here, this one. Uh... TWM5, no other part number. So this one goes in the center, then you pound this with your hammer, then it pushes those pegs down and in to the side of the crankcase where your threads, threads are that you just tapped, 
and it holds it holds it in. I've never had one of these ever come out. They've been amazing for me. I've done thousands of re-threading like this. Okay, so now I'm gonna tap it down, but you don't, like I say, you don't need that tool. You can use, let's say, one of your Allen wrenches on your bench. This is a six mil. Take yourself a little hammer, and you gotta get it nice and square. And just give it a pound down like that. Done, okay? Let's check it out with a five mm screw. There you go, threads in perfect. What did that take? A couple minutes? That's a lifesaver, man. Those will work on any, for any five mm screw. So yeah, that's a pretty good fix. Um, a darn good fix. You, you can't beat it. So I've told people before about these, these, but now I've noticed, like I say, I Google searched it yesterday. You can go on Amazon and order them up. Um, then just go to your local um, tool store and get yourself the tap. What you said again is an eight millimeter by 1.25. And the drill is a 17 64th. Works perfect. So anyways, that's that 066 fixed, which was also for many other models of chainsaws and any piece of equipment really with a 5mm, go-kart engines, bicycles, you know, you name it, man. Okay, so uh, today's big bore day. Check it out, man. I just have my laptop sitting on top of these cylinders because this is space it up. Doing uh, 3120 for Hugh. Uh, I got his 8081 and I'm doing his 3120. And I'm doing another 3120 for a nice gentleman down by Spokane, Trevor Britton. He sent me a beautiful uh, patch from his fire hall in Spokane, which is on my bench above it. Kind of cool. Firemen are great people, man. They save your lives and they help save our forests as well. Thumbs up to all firemen for firefighting the um, forest and, and keeping you safe in your towns. He also, it was funny, yesterday uh, I was just tearing a saw apart and, and he, I, I phoned him because of the throttle on the 3120. That's something to watch out for. 3120 is brand new out of the box. Some of the throttles aren't adjusted right. You're only getting half to three quarters throttle on them. So you wonder why the thing doesn't have much power and it runs 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 lean. So check that adjustment. You know, you'll see on your lever on the 3120 carburetor, you can do, screw the screw to adjust your throttle cable. That's what it's for. So I told him that, plus he said it was hard turning it over. So I, I took it apart, took the cylinder off and holy crap, right down on top of the crank load, there was a big chunk of, uh, old starter rope that's what to me it looked like so it had been running around inside of his engine then i'm putting two to two together thinking 3120s come with a 404 rim on them sprocket that is rim driver whatever you want to call it so i i kind of turned the saw sideways oh geez it's got a three eighths on it so someone used the old rope technique which is fine it works fine that and a piston stop for taking your clutch off Obviously got the rope caught in, in a port and it broke off in that saw and he didn't even know until he went to run it and that's why it was running tight tight to turn over and, and, and not running right. So if you are going to change your sprockets, do the rope technique properly, be really careful, only turn it back from top dead center, you know, maybe half an inch, get that rope up there and turn it back up to it. Don't let it free fall into the transfer ports and get caught, you'll never... Very hard to get the jug back off if you get it caught between the piston and the transfer port. You'll damage something. So be careful with that or use the piston stop properly. And don't have this piston at bottom to the center with the piston stop in and crank that sucker with a half inch impact on that clutch because you know they got to come off left hand and sometimes they're on hard. Just don't hammer that piston up to that piston stop. You can break a, put a hole in it. So get that, turn the flywheel by hand till your piston's touching the piston stop then use your impact or a breaker bar. Okay, that's your techniques of the clutch. I've kind of shown that before. Here's another interesting one, 461. So I was in pretty good shape, had a couple weird things done to it, but it was seized up. My buddy uh, Aaron from Tomahawk Tree Service in Victoria. Anyone ever needs any good tree work, get a hold of uh, Tomahawk Tree Service down in Victoria. 
Aaron Gray is the owner's name. Fabulous guy. Him and Raf is uh, kind of a manager. Raf's a great guy. And uh, just a good crew down there. So he sent up this 461, wouldn't turn over. Me and Sam take it apart. Well, Sam took it apart. Sorry, Sam, I'm taking all your credit. He took it apart. One of the carburetor nuts went down in it. You can see a bit of damage there and a big chunk out of the bottom of the intake. Not huge though. Basically, I have showed you on the 460 once, they have like that ramp in there, you know, that's kind of bad flashing, you know, and I take that out when I port them. So I'm just going to port this one. That little bit of damage here is just going to give it a little more intake timing, but it'll still run fine. I got a brand new piston for it. Pistons aren't cheap anymore. 461 piston in Canada sells for about $220 now. I wonder if people use aftermarket, but they never last either. Aftermarket are terrible. Okay, so I'm gonna fix that for Aaron. Do all these big bore ones today. And a 357 slash 2156 John Surratt cylinder for Brack Acres. And get his 592 back to him and his beautiful little uh, John Surratt little snappy unit. Or it will be when it's done. So yeah, there you go. That's that part of that. Um, Someone else asked me something yesterday. No. Well, that video yesterday was terrible. My phone's really bad right now. My screen is just messed right up. It's cracked all over the place. I'm using my back camera on the back because the front was no good anymore. So Friday, I'm going to take this phone in and get it fixed. I'm going to go uh, get a new screen on it and get it tuned up. Just like you would bring your saw to me if it had a broken crankcase or something. And there's another thing. 661s. Six, six, oh, my God. Crankcase is cracking like crazy. Good saw, good powerful saw. Uh, but had some case issues, but it's kind of cool that you can buy just a half for a 661. So you get a brand new half with it with new screws and a seal and bearing in it, and you just swap the one side. Obviously, they know they had uh, issues with that side. And that's why they, uh, of course, uh, let us buy just a half now instead of the whole thing like we did for years and years, eh? Yeah, okay, that's still day. Uh, get on port in here now and uh, get back and put some stuff together. I got a big surprise coming up in the next day or two here. Some stuff that, that Johnny got um, got made. Uh, we're going to be selling at our shop and I'll just keep you in suspense about that. Keep a side of it, stick a nice rubber on the road. Enjoy this fall. Look at this, man. I'm stealing a t-shirt and it's like three quarters of the way halfway through october uh, very very odd and, and, and on the forecast this morning they don't even see any rain for at least another week you know but we really need it gotta get them salmon up those rivers so we can get out fishing and catch some more beautiful salmon uh, they're schooling up out there right now like crazy you're out inside of the rivers and our forest here is so dry we're still in extreme conditions here you're allowed to have a campfire but i don't suggest it you know think about it right just think about it. You go outside right now and kick the dirt. If we get any heavy rainfall right now, we're just going to end up having flooding like we did a year year ago or two years ago when we had that bad stuff in the Fraser Valley. Anyways, that's enough yapping for me. Got to get to work. Have a great day. Thanks for watching.